Welcome to the video tutorial introduction to using Jump 10 for Analytics presented by the University of Akron Department of Management. In this tutorial we will go over a few basic tasks that you will perform using Jump uh, which will lead to more complicated analyses in the future. At this time let's go ahead and open our Jump software and once that opens we're going to open an Excel file that contains our data set that we'll be working with. This data set is available through the Jump Sample data sets therefore it's always available to viewers of this tutorial with access to Jump. I'm going to press File, Open and notice the Excel file named Big Class Dataset. We're going to click on that, double click to open. And once that file opens, you'll see the main data table window. This dataset represents a sample class of 40 students aged 12 through 17. Uh, along with the ages, we have the student's name sex, gender, and also the student's height and weight. Okay, now when we're looking at this data table we're going to think of it in terms of columns and rows. A column is any one of the characteristics, name, age, sex, height, or weight, and a row represents one of the individual students. Let's first check and make sure that our data types are set properly. Going over to the middle left of the data table, we see that name and sex have the red bar graph symbol, which indicates that those have been set to nominal, and the remaining variables have been set to continuous, indicated by the blue triangle. These are all the appropriate types that we want for these variables, so we can now move on to our next step. First thing we're going to cover is how to make a new column. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is uh, decide what our column is going to be. Let's say we're working on uh, some kind of study about obesity and we want to make a new column indicating whether each student is in the upper half of the weights or in the lower half of the weights among the whole distribution. And in order to do that, let's decide what cutoff point we want to use to make that decision. So we're going to come over here to Analyze, Distribution, and we're going to plug in the weight category over to the Y columns area and press OK. Okay, so let's make this readable. I'm going to click on the little red triangle by distributions, press stack to make it sideways. And now we have many characteristics available of the distribution of the weight variable. Uh, we'll talk about this a little later in the tutorial in more detail. At this point, we're interested in the mean or average weight of all 40 students. And here it looks like that mean weight is 105. We're assuming that this is in pounds. So now that we have that, we can close down that distribution. And now, let's make our new column. So the first thing we're going to do is right-click on the header of the first blank column. We're going to press New Column, and for the column name, we're going to call that Heavy. And we'll explain how that name works in just a moment. Okay, so at this point, let's press Column Properties and Formula. So now we need to tell the computer what exactly formula is going to be used to, to, to populate our new variable. And what we're going to do here is enter an if-then statement, which is a very common type of formula to use when making a new column. So I'm going to come over under the functions box, press conditional. The first item in that list is if. I'm going to press that, and you'll notice now that it, we have a blank template for an if statement in the 
formula programmer box. So what I'm going to do is click inside the red box to make sure that's active. I'm going to come up here to wait, drag that into the box. And on my keyboard, I'm going to press the less than key, and now I have a, a new box that pops up to enter the, the weight cutoff that we determined, which is going to be 105. Okay, now there's going to be two possible values that this new category can contain. We're going to use 1 to indicate true and 0 to indicate false. So therefore, if the weight is less than 105, the name of the category heavy would be false. So any student with a weight less than 105 will want to enter 0 into the new category. Now coming down to the else clause, the only other possible option would be 1. So we're going to enter 1 there. Press enter to lock that in. And, uh, and that will complete the programming of our new column. So we can now press OK on the formula entry box and again press OK on the new column box. And now you'll notice that the column heavy contains either a 0 or a 1 for each student. Uh, for example, the first student's weight is 95, which is less than our cutoff point of 105. And that student has a 0 under the heavy column. The next student weight is 123, which is above our cutoff point of 105, therefore that student has a 1, and so forth throughout the rest of the data set. Now that we've created the new column, we need to check the data type that Jump has assigned to it and make sure that it has the right data type. Looking over at the middle left of our data table, we see the new column has been added to the bottom of that list, and by the fact that it has the blue triangle next to it, that indicates that the computer has set it as a continuous data type. In this case, we want this to be a nominal data type because although the 0 and 1 are numeric values, they represent true and false, which are nominal concepts. So what we're going to do is we're going to left click on the triangle next to heavy, come down to nominal, press nominal, and now we have our, our variable all set up to go. So now, Let's go back to a distribution analysis and spend a little time looking at what we can do there. So we'll come up to the top to analyze, press distribution, and we're going to look at two categories at once. So I'm going to click height, control click weight to highlight both height and weight. Then I'm going to drag both of those categories into the Y columns box. And what this is going to do, it's going to perform two separate analyses on each of these distribution, and it will show them together. So that'll save us time in having to run each analysis separately. So when you're all set there, press OK, and it's going to raise the distribution up. Let's right click on the little red triangle by distribution, press stack so we can read this better. So looking at this distribution, let's take a look at the weight distribution. On the left side, we see our box plot and histogram. And looking at this histogram, I see that the, the hump of the curve is towards the left of the graph. Therefore, that indicates that the weight variable may, may have a uh, right skewed distribution based on that. Now let's look at the center output column. From here, we can find the maximum value which is 172, the minimum is 64, and we can also find the three quartile measurements. 25th quartile, or Q1, is 91.25. That corresponds to the left side of the box plot box. The center of the box plot is the median, which is 105 also. And the third quartile, or the 75th percentile, represented by the right side of the box plot box, is equal to 115.75 units. Now, moving to the summary statistics on the right side of the output, we can find many of our standard statistics, such as the mean, 105, standard deviation, 22.20, and sample size, n, which is 40 in this case. Let's customize this display to better suit our needs. We're going to press on the little red triangle, Customize Summary Statistics, and let's turn a few of these off that we don't 
have any interest in now and we would like to know the median and mode range interquartile range so once we've selected all the options we want to be visible roll down to the list and press OK and you'll see that our summary statistics for weight has been updated to contain those new statistics median of 105 the mode is 112 range is 108 and the IQR or the range between the first and third quartile is 24.5 okay great job so far on this and finally now that we've put a bit of work into customizing this output display let's save this as a script and have it immediately available with a couple clicks so in order to save this script I'm going to click the little red triangle next to distributions come down to script and from that menu I'll select save script to data table okay now that our script is saved we can close this output box down and if you come over here to the upper left of the data table you notice that a new script has been added called distribution this is not a good name so let's rename the script let's click on the little red triangle go down and press edit and that will invoke the script editor box we'll come up here to distribution double click on that and let's give this script a fun name we're gonna call this my exciting first jump script okay now that that's all set we'll press OK and you can see now that the name has been changed to our new name so let's make sure that that worked okay and raise that script so we're gonna press on the little red triangle now we'll press run script and you'll notice that the output comes up exactly as we set it up previously the script is a very useful feature especially once we start developing more complicated models and outputs okay now that we have our output up let's copy some of this output and paste that into a word document okay the first thing we want to do is click on our output window to make sure that window is active and you'll notice that our current mouse pointer is the standard arrow and what we want to do is we're going to change that to the selection tool which we can do easily by making sure that the window is active then pressing S on the keyboard and you'll notice now that the tool turns into the weird plus tool so whatever we want to select if we come up here to distributions and press that the entire output would be selected however in this case let's only take the output for the weight distribution so I click on the header for weight you'll notice that only the weight data becomes blue indicating that it is selected now I will press control C on my keyboard which will put the selected content into the computer's clipboard I will come to my word document press control V and you'll notice that the output is uh, pasted in exactly as it appeared in the in the screen output okay I think we've covered plenty for this tutorial so we'll shut everything down and for one last task let's uh, demonstrate how to save the jump data file since we're done with this output we'll close the output window down we see our script is still over here so let's save the data file so we've created the new column and we've created a new script so we want to make sure and save those so we'll head up here to file come down here to save as and you want to make sure that you're in the correct directory uh, navigate to the correct directory if necessary and let's give this a name big class demo so that will be the name of our jump file we'll press save and now we can X the data file closed and if we want to reopen that file it's a simple matter of open coming navigating to the directory that contains our file big, big class demo we'll double click on that open it up and we see that indeed we have saved our new column and our new script 
Great job on the lesson today, and uh, good luck with your future analysis using JUMP.